want to speak to you not as a lecturer. And if you listen to this discussion as if it were a lecture, I suggest you leave now. So let me put it a different way. The question I would like to pose, or for you to be thinking about, is, is there anything that the person in your seat might possibly do about what we're talking about? So I'm putting it to you in a very nasty way that the problem is existential, and whether we, you and I, will do anything to move the ball. So that's the opener. Now, simply, I'm sure you've all heard this wonderful quote by Margaret Mead, but it is dead accurate. Whether you stand way on the left, moderate, liberal, conservative or not, quote, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And if you think about that, think about a couple kids in the early 60s in the civil rights, pre-civil rights era, a very small group, deciding they were going to sit in at lunch counters. And they made a decision to act. Many of you know of the Mondragon experiment in the Basque region of Spain. It is now a, it's an extremely interesting integrated set of cooperatives and socially owned, you might say socialist or socially owned cooperatives in an integrated structure, now over 50 years old, involving 100,000 employee worker owners, cutting edge, this is not your local co-op, this is cutting edge research at the edge of manufacturing, high tech, as well as services. The ratio of income from the top to the bottom is four to one in 80% of the co-ops. In the big ones, it is up to nine to one as compared with American corporations, which are often 250 or 350 to one. What is interesting is that in Cleveland, Ohio, a very sophisticated version of exactly that model is underway in a city, one of the devastated cities, and it is building next two weeks from now a large-scale industrial, green as it can be, industrial laundry will open under this structure owned by the workers. There is a very large solar installation cooperative in the same structure owned by the workers. There is a development in Cleveland of a large scale, industrial scale greenhouse, solar powered, geothermal, owned by the workers, and producing, when I say industrial scale, I was corrected. It will produce, I said, 1,000 heads of lettuce a day. No, it's about 3,000 heads of lettuce a day. I want to give you a couple numbers. You've heard them all before, but as you probably are aware, the top 1% of Americans owns literally 50, 50% of the investment capital of the United States. That's a medieval number. That's a number that is structured in the way that medieval society was organized. The top 5% owns 70% of investment capital. It is an extremely highly concentrated organization of capital. By the way, uh, this is the richest country in the history of the world. If you were to produce, divide the economy up, every family four and four would have something of the order of $170,000. If technology goes forward at minimal rates compared with the 20th century, 20th century was a lousy century in economic terms. Great Depression, two world wars, stagnation, stagflation, Vietnam War, Cold War, huge uses of resources. Even so, it increased GDP per capita by sevenfold. If the 21st century does as badly as the lousy 20th century, the productive capacities of the system will reach towards a million dollars for every family of four, not counting inflation. Madison's argument was very straightforward, and it was brilliant. He said, spread them out. He called it extend the market. Spread them out, and the people out there in California, there <clears throat> was no California then, and the people in New England, the people here in Virginia, will divide and conquer, and they will never be able to take over property. That's the model, and you're living it right now. Moreover, large numbers are coming. We, there are another 150 million Americans will be here by mid-century. 
ecological disaster built into the numbers. If you accept the high number from the Census Bureau, it will be 1.1 billion by the end of the century. It's already 330, 340 million. You cannot, I ask you to think about it, the person in your chair, uh, tell me how you're going to run participatory democracy in a continental system of 350 million people, which will be 500 million by mid-century. That cannot be done. But the intention here is not, from my point of view, simply to do good works, though that's important. It is to self-consciously, remember I'm talking about the person in your seat, self-consciously asking whether we can rise to the challenge of saying we will create a vision that is real, not just we're going to fight the guys. What is it that you want? What is it that you want? If you don't like capitalism and you don't like state socialism, what the hell do you want? And if you don't have an answer to that, you're just playing around. 